Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Jira Administrator Tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are still continuing with the customization options available in Jira Administrator. And today we'll be talking about the field configuration. In our previous tutorial, you understood about how to create a custom field which might be required by any other project team members. But in this tutorial, we will understand more about that, like how we can further configure a particular field which is created and also talking about how to render a field, how to make a field mandatory. Of course, sometimes the requirement of a particular field to be is to make mandatory. That means it is mandatory field to be entered while creating an issue type. So that's where we will be understanding more about what exactly configuration consists of, what are the configuration scheme files, and how do we associate a new configuration using a scheme to a particular issue type as well. So let's get started and explore a little more about the field configuration as a part of the Zira Administrator today. In this tutorial, we are continuing ahead with the field section of Jira Administrator and talking about field configuration and field configuration schemes. In order to understand field configurations, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we understood about how to create custom fields and associate that to a new screen or an existing screen in order to showcase that field on a particular issue type. Now, there is something more which you can do with the field settings or field customization. Of course, there are many other fields which you already find and which is used by a particular scheme. So if you see here, the field section in the project setting shows you that they are using a scheme and which is known as the system default field configuration. So of course, anything which you apply as a customization makes use of a scheme. And of course, the scheme name will be displayed to you as a part of the project settings. And that's what you find here in the section project settings summary that what is the cost scheme here. Now, let's go back to the administrator and figure out what exactly the default settings are. Now, if you select the field configuration, you do find a default field configuration here, which my project is basically using and it has a lot of settings. You can just click on the configure button and you can have a look here that what exactly this project is making use of. Okay, so there are so many fields which are listed and they have also a screen associated with that or other way around, these are the screens which are associated with a particular field which are predefined. Now, the options what you get as an action list, that is you can edit it, you can hide it, or you can change the number of screens where it should be visible. So this is about how you can customize that what are the predefined fields which should be visible or should not be visible to you. If in case you want to hide an existing field which is predefined by the template, you can make use of this field configuration. But what if you want to create something which is quite specific to your project? That's where you make use of a field configuration scheme. Where if you go to the field configuration scheme, right now, we do not have any scheme here. That's the reason it is by default picking up the default configuration file itself as a default scheme. So let's create a new field configuration scheme here and name it as my fields configuration. And click on add. Now you created a new, for, new scheme altogether for your uh, field configuration. Now go back to the field configuration and you will see that my field configuration is the scheme which is automatically applied to this. In order to make any configuration to this now, you can click on the configure and make any kind of changes which are required. For example, if you want any field to edit, click on that and you can change the name of it or you can customize any particular description so that. Click on cancel if you don't want to do anything there. Next, when you come to the attachments, you come to the other fields. Let's find out our field which we created. Type of request, right? It's visible on this. So let's play around with this option. Let's make it as a mandatory field. So click on required. And uh, that's it. So you're done with this. So let's go back to our project. Come to the uh, project information in my project 10. And, uh, yep, we're here. Let's click on create and uh, select the issue type as customer request. 
And if I come here, can you see there's a small asterisk right next to it stating that this is a mandatory option. Type of request is mandatory. And that's how you do it by clicking on the required button, enabling it. So if I go down at the bottom, I now see that it is optional. This link has automatically turned into optional because I marked it as required. So wherever you see optional, that means it is a mandatory field already and it marks required here on the left side. Okay. And if in case it's already uh, optional, then it will show you required as a button to make use of it. If in case you want to modify any of the changes, then you can definitely make use of screens to change it to appear in some of the screen or not on any screen. So these are your project specific. If you have any other projects, you can hide it wherever it should be visible or it should not be visible. And you can generally even create a configuration which might be applicable to any project by just hiding it. All right. And renders basically stands for that it uh, moves from one particular uh, you know, field type to another field type and extract information from there, like copy paste. So it's like uh, inheriting the details from one field to another field. For example, whenever you talk about the create uh, field or the created on, created date and time, generally, even if you don't put a date and time in any of these fields and click on submit, then automatically it captures a date and time stamp to be showcased there. Now that's what you call it as renderers, where the renderers can be used to import information from other sources or any of the particular field. So if you create an renderers, let's say for example, um, maybe this one here, linked issues or log work, that is not visible on our screen. Okay, let's click on the environment or description. Click on renderers. Now it will show you wiki style renderer or default text renderer. So it will just import the data. Okay, so that's it. Your schemes are done now here. All you need to do is your my field configuration is here and click on configure further. And you have default field configuration. We're using that. Associate an issue type with the field configuration. This is where you get the permission to associate it to a particular issue type that I want to use these settings only. That means these fields should be visible, these fields should not be visible. So just like any other thing, what you have done with help of the schemes. If you want to apply any specific settings to any particular issue type, then you need the help of a scheme. So create the scheme and associate that scheme as a type of the uh, to the issue type and apply that there. So just click on this and select the issue type here and apply to that. Okay, could be any one of these. And click on add. And that's it. You're done. You can apply the new settings or new configurations of whatever you have created back to the particular issue type. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.